Part 5 Configuring Jenkins To get Jenkins set up correctly we have configuration items to set up. The first is the integration to AWS. The second is a configuration that actually starts a specific type of EC2 instance i.e. our Linux and Ubuntu machine. The third is to configure some initialization scripts so once that Linux and Ubuntu machine is up we want some scripts to run to update software and add some other new packages that we'll need. And then fourthly, we need to configure the job that kicks off that build, install and starts testing our application on that client slave Linux machine. So let's have a quick look around Jenkins and see those four different areas. So on our pre-configured or well, completed configuration of Jenkins, the first of those four items then is to look at the configuration for the Amazon EC2 plugin. So under Manage Jenkins, under the Main Configure System option, at the bottom of the configuration page, right at the bottom, you will see a section called Cloud. And this allows us to set up new cloud integrations. So I have set up here a cloud integration for Amazon EC2. I've given it a name. And I've supplied an access key, a secret access key, which we'll talk about in the next module, along with details about the region I want to create instances in and a private key that we created from our last module. So Once we've configured those items, we can test our connections and make sure that we have a successful connection to our Amazon EC2 account. So the second configuration item we need to set up is the configuration of the node that we want to create in our Amazon EC2 account. So again, back to Manage Jenkins, the configure system, and you'll see below our cloud settings, so our Amazon EC2 cloud settings, Below that, once we've tested the connection, we then get a section called AMIs, and this allows us to create details for our Amazon machine instances. So in this particular setup, what I've done is given the, name, given the machine a name. I've specified the AMI ID, so that's from Amazon, and tells Amazon what type of machine to run up. And if I have a quick look at my Amazon EC2 account, you'll see in here that I already have a Linux Ubuntu machine up and running, which I initiated from Jenkins earlier. And if we look at the AMI for that machine, you'll see that it's AMI and it ends in 4FB, and that corresponds to the same AMI ID that I've defined in Jenkins. So a couple of other things in here, the instance type. So if you remember, this is kind of the size of our virtual machine that we're running up, and you can select from the usual list and a few other options to do with security groups and the remote user we're going to use. So that's the configuration of the AMI that we're going to run up automatically from Jenkins each time we want to run a build or job. So the third configuration item then. We need to run some initialization scripts once that machine, that slave or client Ubuntu machine has been run up. And that'll be software packages that might be needed for the installation and the build of our application that's under test. Now there are several ways to update those scripts. One is you once the machine is running, you can go to configure. And this will configure the init scripts, as they're called, for all machines that are run up using that particular AMI. Or the other option is to go back into Jenkins, Manage Jenkins, under the Manage Nodes option. And you'll see under here that we've got the drop down arrow. And from there, we can get to that same configure page. But if the machine is not already running, you won't have these options. These will not show up. So you will need to configure that same information 
from the main Manage Jenkins configure system page. And again, it's right at the bottom underneath the AMI definitions. So we defined our AMI all up here. AMI ID, instance type, security groups. And underneath this, there are some, or there is a field for the init scripts. And as you'll see in a minute, the init scripts we're using, just update Java, add some swap space, and add a couple of other packages that we need on that machine in order to build our application. Now bear in mind these init scripts will be specific to your application that you want to install and build. It's all of the dependencies, software dependencies and package dependencies that you need to run your application. So the fourth item then, lastly we need to define the job. And those jobs can be configured directly from the main home page. You can either modify existing jobs and click to the right of the job and then click configure or you can click on the new item and create a new job altogether. Now those jobs look like this. They have a project name, they have uh, some details about where you want to build and install or run that job. So that's on our Ubuntu Linux machine. Some details about the schedule, i.e. when you're going to run this job. And then some commands to execute to carry out the job. So again, this is going to be specific to your application, how you build it, how you install it, and how you test it. And for our example, we're using Rocket Chat as our application under test. And we have some commands to clean up a system, install the packages we need, configure a database, build the application, and then start the application. Now I want to make one thing clear about this setup and that is if we come back to our schematic of what we're building here we have Jenkins running on our Windows control machine and it's that machine that's responsible for running up the AWS instance that's going to be running our application under test Rocket Chat in this instance. Now because Jenkins is going to have control of starting and stopping that machine Jenkins will, under our configuration, when it's not using that machine, it will terminate it. So it will kill the instance, delete anything that's on the file system or in memory, and run down that machine completely. Now this is as designed, and it's designed in this way because it forces you to make sure everything is in the automation scripts under Jenkins. Every action that you need to build the test environment is scripted, Every build action you need to create and install the application is scripted. Any test data you need to install is scripted. Because if you start doing things manually, you lose track of what you've done, nothing's documented, and you end up with an ad hoc test environment or system. We want to make sure that everything is documented, scripted, and repeatable by using Jenkins. Now in part six, we're going to look in more detail at each of these stages, so part six will cover the Amazon AWS integration steps.